All right, deep divers, buckle up, because today we're taking a deep dive into some serious future tech. Oh, yeah. We're talking about the Helios Solution, a naval defense system that's straight out of science fiction. I mean it. Beams of light taking down threats. It's wild. No kidding. It's pretty mind-blowing stuff. And the crazy thing is, this isn't just some far-off concept. Oh, no. This tech is being deployed right now as we speak. Yeah, we've got this incredible overview, the Helios Solution, laying it all out. So let's get down to brass tacks. What exactly uh, the Helios Solution and why should you, our listeners, care? You know, in the simplest terms, it's a cutting edge naval defense system. It combines high energy lasers with optical dazzlers and D throws in some really, really advanced surveillance tech. So it's not just a laser. Right. It's like this whole suite of tools all working together to keep ships safe. Exactly. But OK, lasers, come on. Yeah. We're talking about a laser powerful enough to take down drones, even small attack craft. Oh, yeah. That's got to be like sci-fi movie cool, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's definitely got that cool factor. Yeah. But it's also a huge e shift in how we think about naval warfare. How so? Well, we're moving away from those traditional weapons, the kinetic ones, and going for a more precise and, you know, controlled approach. Interesting. So less collateral damage. Exactly. Okay. I'm intrigued. Let's break this down step by step. What exactly can this system do? We've got this image here, kind of like a roadmap, showing the key capabilities. Starting with the high energy laser, it's packing over 60 kilowatts. Wow. That's enough juice to neutralize fast attack craft, drones, all those threats with crazy speed. And that speed is really key why in a combat scenario. I mean, we're talking fractions of a second here. Right. The Helios solution, it lets naval forces react almost instantly. Wow. Minimizes that risk of collateral damage and gives them a massive tactical advantage. Yeah, because in those situations, like you said, every second counts. Oh, absolutely. But, okay, the Helios solution, it's not just about raw firepower. It's also got this crazy long-range ISR capability. Mm. For those who don't know, ISR is intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Right. Basically the eyes and ears of the fleet. Exactly. So tell me, what's so special about Helios's ISR? Well, it can detect and track threats from a distance. It gives commanders this clear picture of what's happening all around them, allowing them to make smart decisions, you know. So it's not just about taking OUT threats. It's about spotting them before they even become a problem. Exactly. A total game changer for situational awareness. Talk about a comprehensive defense system, yep. right? Okay. But there's one more piece of this puzzle I got to ask about. The CISR Dazzler. Now, this one sounds really interesting. Oh, it is. Lay it on me. Okay. So the Dazzler. It uses this non-lethal beam of light to temporarily blind or disorient enemy drones. No way. Yeah. It basically neutralizes their surveillance and attack capabilities. BUT, and this is important, it doesn't cause any permanent damage. So it's like giving those drones a timeout. Kind of. <laughs> I like it. But seriously, this non-lethal option, it's got to be crucial in situations where avoiding collateral damage is like the top priority. Oh, absolutely. It really shows a shift in naval warfare towards a more controlled, more ethical way of doing things. That's fascinating. Yeah. Now, I got to ask about the future. The Helio solution, it's not just a static system, right? No, not at all. It's designed with upgrade flexibility in mind. What does that mean, exactly? It means it can evolve. As technology gets better, the laser's power can be boosted, new capabilities can be added, it can even be integrated with other combat systems. Whoa, so we could be talking about a network of defenses all working together. Exactly, like a web of interconnected systems. That's incredible. So it's not just a solution for today, it's a platform that can grow and adapt over time. Exactly. I see they've also designed it with something called equipment commonality in mind. Right. What's that all about? That basically means easier maintenance and upwards, it's a huge win, logistically speaking, and cost-effective, too. Streamlining things means naval forces can stay ahead of the curve, you know. Keeps them ready for action. Exactly. Smart. Okay, so we know it can do all these amazing things, but how does it actually get onto a ship? The source material mentions ship and combat system integration, and it sounds pretty impressive. It is. The Helios system is fully marinized. Marinized, meaning? It means it's built to withstand anything the sea throws at it. Salt water, humidity, you name it. Oh, that makes sense. And it's designed to integrate perfectly with the ship's structure. Minimal footprint, maximum space efficiency. So it's not just bolted on as an afterthought. Oh, no. It's oh. all part of the design from the ground up. That's impressive. And here's a key detail. 
It's specifically designed to integrate with the Aegis combat system. Ah, Aegis. <laughs> the brains of a guided missile destroyer. Exactly. By combining Helios with Aegis, you're giving these destroyers a superpower. In what sense? Well, they can detect AND track threats and then neutralize them incredibly fast and with pinpoint accuracy. It's a force to be reckoned with. Okay, I'm sold. We've got this system. It can shoot lasers, see for miles, and even blind enemy drones. But what's going on under the hood? What are some of the key components making this all possible? All right, let's pop the hood and take a look. At the heart of the system, you have the high energy laser, or HEL. The business end of things. Absolutely. It generates that powerful beam of light we've been talking about. And how does it actually work? It's a spectral beam combined fiber laser. Basically, it merges several fiber lasers to create a single super powerful beam. Huh, I'm trying to picture that. Think of it like combining multiple flashlights into one super bright beam. Ah, uh, uh, okay, I get it. But you need a way to control all that power, right? Absolutely. We can't have laser beams just firing off randomly. Uh-huh, right. So what keeps it in check? The beam control subsystem, that's its job. It acts as the brain of the laser, makes sure the beam is focused, hits its target accurately. Even with the ship moving on the waves? Yep. It uses sophisticated algorithms and sensors to counter any movement or disturbances. So even in rough seas, the laser stays on target. Exactly. And to ensure that accuracy, the system uses those ISR and optical trackers we talked about before. So it can see A and D shoot. That's right. They're constantly scanning, identifying threats, and locking onto targets with incredible precision. But hold on. All that energy generating a laser beam like that, it's got to generate a ton of heat. You're right, it does. And managing that heat is crucial. That's where the thermal and environmental management subsystem comes in. What does that do, exactly? It keeps everything cool, literally. Like a built-in AC unit. Kind of. It uses a combination of cooling techniques like refrigerant, chilled water, and even clean, dry air from the ship to make sure the laser operates at the right temperature. Wow, they thought everything. But even with a cool laser, you still need a way to control when it fires to make sure it's safe. Absolutely. That's where the control system steps in. It's the command center for the whole Helio solution. What does it actually control? Everything. Diagnostics, performance monitoring, fire control, safety protocols, you name it. It's constantly monitoring the laser, making sure everything runs smoothly and safely. So it's like the brain making sure the laser doesn't go haywire. Haha, <laughs> exactly. But none of this would work without a reliable power source, right? True. You need juice to run a laser like that. That's where the power module comes in. What's its role? It takes the ship's power and converts it to the exact type and amount of energy the laser needs. It makes sure there's a constant flow of power to keep things running. The fuel for the laser beam. Exactly. And then, of course, there's that CISR subsystem integrated dazzler we mentioned before. Oh, yeah, the dazzler. That's the part that can temporarily blind enemy systems, right? Yep. It's really innovative tech, combines those high-tech eyes with a non-lethal dazzler. It gives the crew a way to disrupt enemy surveillance and neutralize threats without causing any lasting damage. So it's not just about blowing things up, it's about having options. Exactly. Sometimes a little time out is all you need. I like it. So it can see, it can shoot, and it can temporarily disable. The Helio solution really is a multifaceted system. It really is, and its versatility is one of its greatest strengths. Well, I'm completely blown away by this technology. It seems like it really does have the potential to revolutionize naval warfare. Oh, it absolutely does. But I have to admit, I'm dying to know more about how it actually changes things out on the open ocean. Well, you're in luck, because that's exactly what we'll be diving into in part two of this episode. Can't wait. Welcome back, deep divers. We left off talking about how the Helios solution really is changing the game when it comes to naval warfare. Yeah, and I'm kind of itching to see it in action. You know, we talked to all these different parts, but how does it all actually come together, like in a real life scenario? Okay, picture this. A guided missile destroyer decked out with the Helios solution. It's patrolling in some tense waters. Suddenly, multiple fast attack craft, they appear on the scene, trying to overwhelm the destroyer. Classic swarm tactic. Oh, I've heard about those. Those small, fast boats, they can be a real pain for larger ships to deal with, right? Oh, absolutely. A real nightmare. But here's where the Helio solution changes everything. See, it's long-range ISR. Those high-tech eyes we discussed, they spot the threat coming long before they're in immediate danger. Uh, so the crew has time to react, strategize? Oh, exactly. They can assess the situation, decide on the best course of action. It's all about having options. So what are their options? 
Do they just fire up the laser right away? Not necessarily. That's the beauty of the Helios solution. It's adaptable. Depending on, you know, the rules of engagement, the kind of threat they're facing, the crew could choose to go non-lethal first. You mean use the Dazzler uh, to, like, confuse the attack craft? Exactly. Temporarily blind their navigation systems, throws their whole attack into chaos, yeah. buys precious time for the destroyer to maneuver or, you know, call for backup. Wow, that's smart. And way more controlled than just opening fire. Definitely. Oh, definitely. But what if things escalate? Let's say those attack craft, they're armed and clearly hostile, ready to fight. What happens then? Well, then the Helios solution can shift gears, get more direct. The high energy laser comes into play, targeting and neutralizing those craft. And remember, this thing travels at the speed of light. So basically, no chance of dodging. Pretty much. Yeah. The Helios laser, it offers this level of speed and accuracy that you just don't get with traditional weapons. It can disable engines, knock out navigation, essentially neutralize the threat long before it can even get close enough to cause any real damage. Okay, that's some next level defense right there. But, you know, it's not just small attack craft that are a threat these days. What about drones? They're becoming more and more common in warfare, right? Absolutely. Drones are a huge E concern. And that's another area where the Helios solution really shines. Let's say that destroyer we were talking about, it's facing a swarm of armed drones. The laser system can lock onto them and just poof, gone. Protects the ship from a potentially devastating attack. And I remember you saying that lasers, they're way more cost effective than using missiles, oh, right? Yeah, for sure. So if a destroyer is facing multiple waves of these drones, the Helios solution, it starts to look pretty good from both a tactical and a you know budget perspective. Absolutely. Cost per shot of a laser, it's way lower than a missile. Plus, think about the psychological impact on the enemy. Knowing they're up against a weapon that can take them out with a beam of light, that's got to be intimidating. It's like something straight out of Star Wars. Right. But I can see how it would make an enemy think twice about engaging a ship equipped with this technology. And remember, you said the Helios solution, it's designed to integrate with existing combat systems like Aegis. That's got to boost its effectiveness even more. Oh, definitely. Combining the Helios laser with a system like Aegis, with its advanced radar and missile guidance, you create the seriously powerful defense network. Faster threat detection, more accurate targeting, much higher level of protection. It sounds like the Helios solution really is pushing us into a whole new era of naval defense. It's pretty exciting. But you know what? I want to dive a little deeper into the tech itself. We talked about some of the key components in part one, but I'm just I'm fascinated by how it all works together to make this powerful, versatile system. Well, it really is a marvel of engineering. Each component plays a critical role. Let's start with the heart of it all, the high energy laser, the HEL. This thing is capable of generating that intense beam of light we keep talking about. Yeah, the beam that can neutralize threats at like the speed of light. But if I remember correctly, it's not just one laser, right? You got it. It uses a technology called spectral beam combining or SBC. Basically, it takes multiple fiber laser beams and combines them into one super beam. So it's like amplifying the power of several lasers into one? Exactly. That's incredible. Yeah. But with that much power, you absolutely need a way to control it. Like we said before, we don't want laser beams just flying around randomly. You're telling me. That's where the beam control subsystem comes in. It's like the brain of the laser, ensuring the beam stays focused, stabilized, aimed exactly where it needs to be. So even if the ship is rocking on the waves, the laser stays on target. That's the idea. It uses these complex algorithms and sensors to compensate for any movement or, you know, anything that could disrupt the beam. Okay, that's seriously impressive. But to be that accurate, it needs to know where to aim. That's where those ISR and optical trackers come in. Exactly. Those are the eyes of the system, constantly scanning, identifying potential threats, locking onto targets. But generating that much power to create a laser beam like that, it must generate a ton of heat. How does the Helios solution handle that? Well, that's a critical part of the design. The thermal and environmental management subsystem, that's its job. That's like a super advanced cooling system. You could say that. It uses a bunch of different techniques, including refrigerant, chilled water from the ship, and even clean, dry air to keep the laser at the optimal temperature. So they basically built a mini air conditioning system just for the laser. Smart. Right. But even with the temperature under control, you still need a way to make sure the laser only fires when it's supposed to and that it's operating safely. Yeah, safety first. Always. Yeah. And that's the job of the control system. Think of it as the command center for the whole Helios solution. So it's calling the shots. 
Pretty much. <laughs> it handles everything from diagnostics, you know, making sure everything is working right, to fire control and safety protocols. It's constantly monitoring the laser, making sure everything runs smoothly. It's like the brain of the whole operation. Exactly. But of course, none of this would be possible without a reliable power source. Yeah, you need a lot of juice to power a laser like that. For sure. And that's where the power module comes in. It does it do. It takes the ship's power and converts it into the specific type of energy that the laser needs. It's constantly monitoring the laser's power demands and making sure it has enough energy to keep firing. So it's like a dedicated power plant for the laser. <laughs> exactly. And then there's the CISR subsystem integrated Dazzler we talked about before. Oh yeah, the Dazzler, it can temporarily blind enemy systems, right? Yep, it's a pretty amazing piece of tech. Combines those high-tech eyes we talked about with a non-lethal Dazzler. Gives the crew a way to disrupt enemy surveillance, even neutralize threats, but without causing any permanent damage. So sometimes you don't need to destroy something, just disrupt it for a bit. Exactly. It's all about having options. Well, the Helios solution definitely seems to have plenty of options. It's really impressive. But I'm curious, how does this tech, how does it actually change the way naval forces operate, like strategically speaking? That's a great question and one that we'll be exploring in part three of our deep dive. All right, deep divers, welcome back for the final stretch. We spent the last two parts really getting into the nuts and bolts of the Helio solution. Yeah, we've seen the tech, we've imagined it in action, but now it's time to zoom out. Big picture time. Exactly. How is the Helio solution changing the whole game of naval warfare? What's the long-term impact? Well, one of the biggest shifts, I think, is the move toward non-kinetic warfare. With the Helio solution, you can neutralize a threat without having to resort to those, you know, traditional explosives. Right, so less collateral damage, more precision. Exactly. It opens up a whole new world of tactical options for naval forces. So instead of just blowing stuff up, they have more control, more flexibility. Right. Take the Dazzler, for example. Yeah. You can disrupt an enemy's capabilities without causing any permanent damage. Which is QGE in situations where you absolutely want to avoid collateral damage like, say, operating near civilian areas. Absolutely. Or in those crowded shipping lanes, using traditional weapons in those scenarios could be a disaster. No kidding. And the speed of the laser, that has to be a game changer too, right? Oh, absolutely. Imagine a destroyer facing a supersonic missile attack. Traditional defenses, they might not even have time to react. But the Helios laser intercepts that missile almost instantly. It's like having a force field. It's pretty close, yeah. And think about the psychological impact on the enemy. Knowing that a ship has that kind of firepower, it's a major deterrent. Yeah, it makes you think twice about messing with them. Exactly. Naval forces are going to have to adapt their tactics, both offensively and defensively, to account for this kind of technology. It's a whole new era of naval warfare. Definitely. And it raises some really big questions about, you know, global security, international relations. Could this even spark an arms race? with other countries trying to develop their own laser weapons. That's a whole other deep dive. But, you know, every new technology has its challenges. We've talked about the technical stuff, the power and cooling, but what about the ethical side of things? That's a crucial point. These are powerful weapons. We need to be having those conversations about responsible use, making sure we're not crossing any ethical lines. Absolutely. Technology is a tool, right? Yeah. It can be used for good or bad. Exactly. The choices we make now, they have huge implications for the future of warfare. And for the future, period. So, as we wrap up our deep dive into the Helio solution, I think the takeaway here is that this is just the beginning. The technology is going to keep evolving. Yeah, we're just getting a glimpse of what's possible. And it's up to all of us to stay informed, think critically about these advancements, and work towards a future where technology makes the world a safer, more peaceful place. Well said. And to all our deep divers out there, keep those brains engaged, keep asking questions, and we'll see you on our next adventure into the world of future tech.